Hello, Camilla. Hello. Hi there. So, Camilla, I'm, we are going to have a brief chat uh, uh, about uh, your work uh, on the first track of the album Crumbs, uh, the track Touch Me. And so I hope that you will be able to share a little bit with me and with us uh, and with everybody who's watching this video, the kind of creative process that you went through. So let us please, since this is the first video we're doing together, maybe you would like to spend uh, um, just a couple of minutes uh, to talk a little bit about yourself, uh, what you do. Everybody knows you're my sister, so we, we, we can skip over that. Uh, that, is not, uh, that is not relevant here because first and foremost, you are a professional photographer, but there you go. Maybe you want to say something about yourself, uh, where you're coming from and what you do for a living. Yeah, I'm a photographer. I come from visual arts and then fashion photography. Um, I spent the last five years in London um, where I worked as a photographer, but also as a creative producer uh, for advertising and fashion. So I have a little bit of a background in planning and organizing and making sure things go according to plan, which is always useful, even in the creative process. Um, and in terms of photography, I think I mostly work on documentary and docu fashion uh, kind of things now. But um, coming from visual arts, uh, crumbs was um, a, a very good way to get back into something that is more um, concept based and more process based as well. Um, so there was a lot of research compared to some of the documentary things I do. So it was a great opportunity to do something a little bit different as well. And you talked about process and organization and how important it is to have structure in the creative process. Uh, and uh, as somebody who has been creating for some time and now most lately has been composing music, I could not agree more. How difficult was it for you to work uh, on this first track, uh, maybe on the other tracks as well, on the visual element of this track? Uh, considering uh, that uh, uh, you did not have immediate access to the final product. It's something that we worked on uh, together as I was composing the album. I think um, I'm going to go backwards a little bit because I think, first of all, there is a level of difficulty based on the fact that the commission, that the, the request you had was to translate music into something visual. So as a starting point, the difficulty was to try and figure out ways to create basically a new um, creative process for myself that would make me able to um, create the steps for myself and understand what were the things that I needed to do to then arrive to a visual. So having, for example, as you said, um, a starting point from a music point of view um, and not the final uh, product was actually really useful for me because I had the chance to see your steps as well. Mm -hmm. So I had the starting point, I had the starting feeling uh, in a way, and some sort of background for each track. Mm -hmm. Very vague, considering that afterwards you gave more background to tracks uh, to the public as well. Right. right. Um, so you gave me just teeny tiny uh, clues of what the the song was about in terms of emotional well, um, and historic like, story uh, backstory. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's absolutely correct. And maybe for those who listen, uh, um, the way that Camilla and I work together is that indeed uh, I started to share with her some of the early versions uh, of the songs, including Touch Me, uh, and she was able to follow the development of the songs. Uh. In some cases, there, there were some significant changes. I don't think in the case of Touch Me, I think the first versions of Touch Me were more or less like the final versions uh, that Camilla and all of you listen to. And then I also provided to Camilla, as she said, uh, some background uh, I'm going to try now and uh, hoping the technology will help us. Uh, I'm going to try and share a couple of examples of the background uh, material, uh, uh, inspirational background material that I gave to Camilla. One was this picture. This is a, a picture, uh, how did you say? It's the Lovers. The Lovers, uh, indeed. 
And let me try to enlarge a little bit to see so that when people look at the video, there you are. So this was an example of the picture that was uh, that I share with uh, Camilla. It's not my picture, of course. It's a very famous painting, actually. And uh, another example of something that I did share with Camilla was, uh, let me see again if I managed to share it. Uh, uh, it was actually this kind of motivational <laughs> sentence, if you will, uh, which I remember reading somewhere some time ago and that really struck me. Uh, mostly because I am somebody when I was younger who used to speak a lot with words uh, and yet I had difficulties expressing my feelings with those words. So the point here is that I shared something uh, with Camilla but I did not tell Camilla the whole story. Not the whole story that you can actually, or not as much of the whole story as you can read uh, on the Crumbs website, the making of section, of which you will find the link in the description of this video. Were you angry because of this? Did you look back at the end of all of this, uh, <laughs> at the end of the, of the, of the job uh, and say, well, Andrea, thank you very much. Uh, uh, it would have been much easier if I had had all of this additional background material that now you're sharing with the world uh, before I started thinking about uh, what the picture of crumbs uh, of a touch me of the track touch me should look like. Um, I think not with this track. In general, when I saw the the making of part with all the material, I was like, oh, come on. I had to figure it out myself. <laughs> but it was actually a very, very important part from an artistic point of view and from a personal point of view as well, because as I told you before, and I have no problem saying it on camera as well, it did um, gave me it did give me the chance to, you know, understand more of what you went through and just have good chats with you so in that sense i'm very glad you you decided to give me specific information also somehow it's much better and this is something we talked about as well it's much better to have a little less mm -hmm. than too much because mm -hmm. otherwise i would have ended up um, creating something that was much more connected to what you Mm -hmm. wanted what you would visualize um and again from the very beginning you were quite clear about the fact that you wanted my interpretation Absolutely. of yep. um your work so Absolutely. Absolutely. in that sense i think it was it was perfect good so you were not angry with me for this reason i'm there always angry other reasons, with you, yes but... yes I, we, we know that uh, i think it's now time to really talk a little bit more let you talk a little bit more about the, the image itself, uh, that what went out, uh, what was actually published together with the album. Uh, so this is the picture as it was published together with the album. Uh, I have to say that I received some quite good feedback on the music, which I was of course very pleased of, but also quite a bit of good feedback, uh, or at least very interested feedback uh, on the visuals on, on your pictures, uh, Camilla. Guide us a little bit uh, through what you try to convey by this picture in this picture. Yes, I think, um, again, as this is the first track, we can just um, chat a little bit about the steps um, that mm -hmm. went, um, that we took to get to the final picture. Um, and again, it's something that I kind of needed to figure out also in terms of uh, communication with you, because um, it was a very specific commission and it was a very different way of working than what than what I'm used to. So mm -hmm. um, in the end, the way we um, worked on, on this together, on the different steps that would take me to the final picture uh, was through regular feedback. So um, I listened to each song at the very beginning and started to collect thoughts and images that came to my mind. And um, all the thoughts and images were very well emotional, um, mm -hmm. well, emotionally based, so feeling based, mm -hmm. which I think was um, the, the main point uh, of the connection we could create anyway, starting from, you know, what went through your mind mm -hmm. and what were you feeling when you uh, composed a track and what could I give back mm -hmm. through images? Mm -hmm. So in this case, I remember that um, I had uh, the material you gave me and I listened to the track knowing um, a little bit of the background as well. And what I immediately felt was this sort of a hike, sort of something that was really stressful and, and painful. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there were these moments of kind of everyday joy, something like 
memories or something very mm -hmm. everyday, very um, familiar mm -hmm. that came back every now and then, but then was immediately um, covered by something a bit more um, painful again. Mm -hmm. So visually, I started with this image of a hike mm -hmm. that didn't feel right because I thought that this had to be connected with something more um, familiar, so more um, an indoor a house, mm -hmm. a home. Mm -hmm. um, and from there, I tried to move it back to an indoor scenario. And what came back also uh, helped by the lovers was this image of a of a move a house ready to ready for a move mm -hmm. so a home all covered with white, white sheets and mm -hmm. you know um, full of memories full of familiar things mm -hmm. that are left behind in a way mm -hmm. so you're ready to you know step in the unknown it's painful you know things are there you know a lot of beautiful things are there but somehow they're covered mm -hmm. at the moment mm -hmm. And so this was the, the main point. And I then tried to figure out how to translate it in images. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the tracks initially, a lot of the, um, way, the way I wanted to translate a lot of the tracks um, were uh, through mixed media um, visuals. Mm -hmm. So initially I thought that the best way to convey the array of different feelings and emotions and and um, stimulus that stimuli 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 mm -hmm. that i would get um through the music would be mixing different layers mm -hmm. um different uh, levels of meaning of images just to enrich um, the whole thing and potentially to create an over or an overall body of work that mm -hmm. would create one single final work. Mm -hmm. So initially the idea of the layers would have meant creating 10 images that one on top of the other or all together would create one big body of work right. for the whole concept al album. The more we work together, the more it made sense to take a different direction. Mm -hmm. So each track is actually a single universe in a way. Yep. They flow together and we worked um, on making that happen, making sure that they were, that they flew, that they were flowing together yep. uh, through color, through shapes and through subjects. But uh, in general, each image is a different universe. So for this one, um, I shared some options uh, of materials and subjects with mm -hmm. you. And we had a chat about what could be um, portrayed. Mm -hmm. So we both agreed that it had to be something that was connected to uh, the idea of home. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to do something bigger, um, like, chairs or sofas or a whole room full of things <laughs> covered and then we kind of scaled it back a little uh, let bit me, let me let me interrupt you there for a second uh, camilla yeah. because already twice and i think this is an important point uh, to make is this is these are making of videos this this uh, the attempt with this video is also to show a little bit what goes behind the creative process uh, as i think sometimes let me as as we speak let me let's get back there good uh, also because you know people have been uh, staring at a beautiful uh, photograph yeah, of yours for yeah, the past four minutes while, but it can get a bit, a bit tiring <laughs> for them uh, um because already twice uh, you pointed out that you had certain ideas for example the layering uh, of the different photos uh, to get to one final product uh, and then uh, uh, a different scenario or a different model than what actually was photographed and uh, you know let's be very honest at the end of the day in the creative process you have to consider the timing you have to consider the budget you have to consider other things and, uh, uh, and so let me ask you camilla from a very practical point of view are you satisfied uh, or disappointed uh, in what you managed to achieve uh, for the time being only for this specific uh, for this specific photograph for uh, for this truck i think in the end 
it actually is very the the picture is very fitting uh, mm -hmm. to the track mm -hmm. um, knowing the final track knowing the starting points of the track and knowing the process that we went through to create the visual because it's um it's a synthesis synthesis so mm -hmm. it's a very good way to um, create something that tells what it needs to tell in mm -hmm. a simple way mm -hmm. and it it manages to um, include different layers and different topics in a way uh, and it's and this was all only possible because we talked about ways of making something that was achievable in the time frame and in budget right. and otherwise I think you know sometimes when you have well first of all a commissioner mm -hmm. second of all uh, time restraints or budget restraints you have the chance to talk more about what is achievable because mm -hmm. otherwise if you have everything you want you right. just do something that you think is going to be super cool mm -hmm. which is great but in the end is not necessarily sometimes it's it's again hubris you know you want to mm -hmm. do something that is going to look fantastic but then you lose a little bit sight on what you actually need to create to share the message that you need to share I, so uh, I'm, I'm glad i went smaller yeah i a couldn't little. agree more with you and i think that actually i i mean my experience is more on the music side of things uh, i imagine it's not that different on the visual arts uh, side of the creative process but in music uh, the technological developments uh, of the past 15 years uh, have just been amazing from this point of view the kind of things you can do musically with very reasonable budget uh, a fraction of what it would have costed you uh, just 10 years ago are incredible uh, which is great i mean i'm certainly not backward looking from the point of view but it does sometimes create uh, it's just too much stuff and then you need to make sure that you really stay focused uh, on what it is that you want to say what is the core message because if you just uh, let your creativity with the tools that are available nowadays uh, run along without time constraints without budget constraints uh, then you can easily i find in music and for what you say that seems to be the case also in the visual arts uh, you can easily find yourself uh, gasping for air at a certain point uh, thinking that you are uh, not not ever getting to a point where you stop and you say okay this this is maybe not the ideal platonic perfection of what i wanted to do but it's good enough and it's good enough to put it out in the world is this something that you also feel in the visual uh, photography or visual arts world uh, th this kind of uh, oh my god we have so much so much technology at our disposal that we need to really focus on what on us as human beings on what it is that we want to convey as human beings you touch a topic that i think i could go on on for a long time mm -hmm. just because it's somehow interestingly the other way around um well in terms of um photography most of all but visual arts um we have so much in terms of platforms we can share mm -hmm. our work on um, it's really tricky to keep it for yourself you just tend to share and just be happy with whatever you have so mm -hmm. far just because mm -hmm. you need to push it into the world mm -hmm. so in this sense the process and i think taking a long time to create something was really valuable mm -hmm with the time and all the you know the other things the commissioning side and the yep. budget and the time yep. like the time frame um but in that sense it's just about for me it was more about knowing i needed to create something that was meaningful for the work in that certain amount of time and it was not a matter of i need to share all these incredible things because i need to yep. show the world that i exist yep. it was yep. just about creating something about this specific track and feeling and moment in life well that's that's great to hear and uh, and i very much agree on this tension that exists between the need to just uh, put out stuff to just show something uh, uh, we we all seem uh, or many of us 
seem to be constantly stressed uh, that if we don't tell the world that we exist, the world will forget about us. Uh, uh, although at the end of the day, I personally feel that the world doesn't care very much one way or the other. I mean, the world at large, people we love care, but the world at large doesn't care that much. Well, on that philosophical thought, uh, let's stop here <laughs> because the video is already is already quite longish. I, I think it's actually a very interesting video, but I am biased. Uh, Camilla, thank you very much uh, for, uh, well, for everything we did together on this album, for finding the time uh, for this chat. Uh, and uh, talk to you soon. Oh, by the way, guys, uh, check out uh, Camilla's website, a professional website. I will put the link in the description uh, and, uh, you know, have a look. I'm not going to say buy her stuff because since I'm a <laughs> brother, there could probably be there could be some kind of rules on Facebook against doing that. Uh, but check out her website and I think you will not be disappointed. So thank you very much, Camilla, and talk to you soon. Thank you. <laughs>